yeah, today I'd like to talk about uh, extending the life of steel bridges 100 years and beyond, uh, specifically with using uh, zinc coatings and more specifically hot dip galvanized coatings. Um, I had a little introduction slide here, but I think I'll skip over it. Uh, Dan has covered this uh, well throughout the beginning of the presentation. But like I said, I'd like to talk about how steel combined with zinc can provide sustainability for bridge design, bridge construction projects, as well as various other steel construction projects as well. Um, and so first, I think we need to define sustainable development which is the social and economic and environmental commitment to growth uh, that not only meets the needs of the present, but it's also important not to compromise the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And so this places a big responsibility on the shoulders of, of architects, engineers, material suppliers, as well as others uh, to protect the interests of, of not only the present generation, but also the future generation. And, and this can all be accomplished through a better understanding of how building products are, are manufactured, used, reused, uh, disposed of, and, and recycled at the end of their service life. And in today's presentation, uh, we'll specifically look at how hot dip galvanizing, uh, which is a zinc coating, can be used to contribute to sustainable bridge design. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so let's take a look at sustaining steel with zinc or hot dip galvanizing and the reasons why. There are three primary tenets of hot dip galvanized steel sustainability. The first is that hot dip galvanizing is uh, the components of hot dip galvanizing are made from, <clears throat> excuse me, natural abundant occurring elements such as steel and zinc. And both of these materials are infinitely recyclable as uh, as we learned earlier, without a loss of properties, meaning that they can be used and recycled and, and reused in future projects. Um, and combining this, uh, these two factors with the decades of maintenance-free longevity um, that ultimately minimizes the environmental and economic impacts over the life of the product, these three components contribute to the overall sustainability. As then, uh, was mentioned earlier, again, steel and zinc are both 100% recyclable and they can be multi-cycled without the loss of any physical or chemical properties. And so 90% of structural steel does come from recycled sources, as well as 30% of the world's zinc supply also comes from recycled sources. And so with galvanized steel or zinc coated steel, you are, you are dealing with uh, components that are highly recyclable, but, but also another important factor of this is the reclamation rate, which is the, the amount that is actually recycled at the end of its life. And so steel is the most recycled material in the world where virtually 100% is reclaimed and reused for other products. And zinc is a close second at 80%. Let's look at the life cycle cost assessment of galvanized steel. Um, or the life cycle, excuse me, life cycle assessment of hot dip galvanizing. I think this will accurately describe the sustainable nature of this product. So when we're looking um, at a life cycle assessment, the first thing we're going to look at is the production phase. And with hot dip galvanizing, there's three different components to this production phase. We have the steel production, the zinc metal production, and the actual galvanizing process, which, which coats the steel with the zinc. And involved in these production steps, we're going to require some raw materials and energy inputs to produce these materials, as well as consequently, there's some emissions that come as a result of manufacturing and producing these products. Um, but the next two boxes are where uh, the uniqueness um, is for hot dip galvanizing is in its use and end of life. And so when you're using zinc, or zinc products to coat steel, such as hot dip galvanizing, uh, they're a maintenance-free coating. The, the zinc is inherently corrosion resistant. It corrodes at a much slower rate than steel. And so there isn't any additional need for maintenance uh, depending on, on, your, on your design service life. And so you're not going to have to input more raw materials or input energy while the galvanized steel is being used. And the only uh, emissions from the galvanized steel's use are zinc corrosion products, which are zinc oxide, zinc hydroxide, zinc carbonate. And so these are, zinc oxide is a, is a product that's commonly found in sunscreen and, th and things of that nature. And so, um, you know, the environmental impact of such zinc corrosion products is very minimal. At the end of the life for hot dip galvanized steel, there is some energy inputs required for dismantling, dis disassembling and transporting it back 
uh, to the mills or to the uh, companies that recycle the products. Um, but, but that is about it. And so as you can see from this life cycle assessment here, um, most of these are described as cradle to grave studies, but with the use of galvanized steel, it's more of a cradle to cradle study since it's going to be reused over and over again. One of the main components or properties of the galvanized coating that contributes to its sustainability is, is its longevity. It, it's a very corrosion resistant material. It corrodes at about 1 30th the, the rate of bare steel. And so when you apply a zinc coating to steel, it protects it for quite a long time. And we've done real world research to prove this. We've uh, went out and we examined corrosion rates at various environments across the United States. And we classified them into five groups so we can produce a chart that, that would estimate the service life in a real general environment. And so if we look at this curves here, we can see that a typical hot dip galvanized coating is about four mils thick. And so we can see if we run up the chart or the graph here at four mils thick, we can see in most any environment, it's gonna provide at least 70 years of service life um, before its first maintenance is required. And so, if um, in some situations uh, the, the service life can be longer because this is just going to indicate uh, the time at which 5% rusting of the steel surface. So it can even last a lot longer than what's shown here. Um, a good example of that, this is not a short span steel bridge, but this is a, um, the, the first fully galvanized bridge in the United States. This is the Stern Bayou Bridge in Ottawa County, Michigan. This was uh, installed in 1966. And we've inspected this project over the years, most recently in 1997. And we measured the zinc coating thickness remaining on this bridge and extrapolated that to determine that the zinc coating would provide at least another 65 years of life, which would bring it to 2062. So this would be a, an example of uh, galvanizing's ability to provide a hundred year design life for bridges. I uh, input the YouTube link on this. We built a, a video, uh, a study that you can watch at a later time. These slides are going to be distributed to everybody. So you can uh, use that link to, to follow up and learn some more about this particular bridge. Other aspects of the galvanized coating that make it sustainable is not only the longevity, but, but the galvanized coating oftentimes or can exceed the design life. And so at the end of its useful life, galvanized steel can, can be reused in a couple different ways. It can be reused without reprocessing. You can check the zinc coating thickness and if there's sufficient zinc remaining on the steel, you can determine its uh, estimated service life based on our chart on the previous slides. Or if you just wanna reuse the steel because the zinc has protected the steel and all of the zinc is consumed, you can recoat and reuse the steel in other applications. And this will ultimately save you more resources and energy. Uh, down the road. So these two factors um, save you resources and energy as well as reduce the environmental impact from emissions and, and ultimately save you money. Here's a good example of that. This is the Four River Bridge in Quincy, Massachusetts. This was a, a temporary bridge structure is what I'm showing you here. So they built a temporary bridge structure while the main structure was being designed and built. And this temporary bridge structure stood for about 15 years from about 2002 to 2017. And then um, the demolition contractor who acquired the steel uh, of this temporary bridge structure um, thought, why, sal why scrap this steel? It still has, they measured the zinc coating thickness and there was sufficient coating and the galvanizing was in good condition. And instead of scrapping it for, um, they decided to reuse it and repurpose it. Um, the gentleman also had a, a foundation that did humanitarian efforts down in Haiti. And so they decided to transport the about 80 feet of um, these bridge sections down to Haiti for use down there. And I'll show you that in a couple slides. And why were they able to do that? It's mainly because of, you know, not only the zinc's corrosion resistance, but its durability. The galvanized coating has, is formed through a metallurgical reaction. So you can see here on this photomicrograph, it produces these layers of zinc and iron intermetallic layers that are actually harder than the steel. And so it makes it uh, a durable coating to be disassembled and dismantled and then uh, put on barges for shipment down to Haiti. Um, the other reason being, 
you know, that it also, another reason why it's durable is because of this diffusion reaction that happens that forms this coating. We can see in the photomicrograph on the left here where the arrow is pointing that the galvanized coating is the same thickness at corners and edges as it is on flat surfaces. And then it also can coat the interior of hollow and tubular structures as well um, as coat threads. And so this can make it for a very durable coating where they ultimately, here is the Four River Bridge transported down to Haiti, and now it has become the Riviere Cachon Grasse Bridge, which um, provides access to areas of Haiti that were inaccessible at certain times of the year. You can see that's over a riverbed there. That riverbed would flood um, substantially at various times throughout the year and, and make this impassable and would cause deaths from drowning. And so uh, the the country of Haiti really had a need for a bridge and this uh, galvanized bridge structure was donated down there. We we also again just completed a, a video series on this bridge. Uh, I put the YouTube link at the top of the slide here. I encourage everyone to visit that video to learn a little bit more about this very unique uh, and cool humanitarian effort. In addition to repurposing galvanized steel for use in other bridges. Uh, galvanized steel also has the ability to be, be, be regalvanized. And the best example of that is, uh, would be with guardrail. And so this particular instance is where this Michigan guardrail was installed um, in the 1960s, but due to traffic tra or damage from traffic and um, uh, specifications and codes were updated. And so they needed to update and uh, reuse this steel, they needed to update this guardrail. And so what they did was instead of purchasing new steel, um, the, a lot of the galvanized coating, um, you know, still remained. So they, they saw how well it performed in the environment, but they needed to upgrade it. So what they did is they took this down and they regalvanized it. They brought it up to codes in the current standards for today's bridge rail. And they ultimately put it back in service, which saved them um, from purchasing new steel, uh, saved them a bunch of money. And finally, today, I'd like to talk a little bit about the economic advantages of galvanized steel. Um, and and it's, I think it's best described using um, our life cycle cost calculator. We have a tool on our website. You can visit, uh, it's a cost calculator tool that compares commonly used coding systems. And we use, we gather data from paint companies, um, from, from KTA Tater and Mace, and we gather data from galvanizers and um, other, other zinc coders like metalizers. And we, and we threw that into our tool to allow people to analyze coatings on particular applications um, in, in both the initial and life cycle cost basis. And so I just did a real general example. Yeah, uh, I encourage everyone to try this out themselves. Uh, you can see some case study parameters on the right here, but I'm gonna cruise through that and just show you the end result here. Um, for this particular project where we were um, assuming a 75 year design life, we looked at all the initial costs of these coating systems, the hot dip galvanizing, also uh, the common two and three cone paint systems. Uh, we also threw in a duplex coating, which is uh, a two coat paint system or, or any paint system or powder coating over galvanizing. And then also another type of zinc coating metallizing, which is um, being used more and more commonly for bridge structures as well. And took a look at all of those on an initial cost basis. And as you can see, um, even on that initial cost, galvanizing is, is, is pretty competitive and, and ultimately the lowest cost in this particular example. But where it really shines is in the life cycle cost analysis. So if we extrapolate this over the 70 year uh, life of the structure and include maintenance repaints, full repaints uh, that these two coat and three coat paint systems are using, you know, you're constantly uh, inputting more dollars and more resources into these coatings to maintain them over their design life. And ultimately it's just going to increase the cost over time. And so as we can see here, uh, over the 75 year life, it's adjusted for inflation as well. You can see that hot dip galvanizing, it, it becomes a clear cut winner in this particular application. And it's also important to note that even the duplex system, which was initially the second highest or second most expensive on an initial cost basis, now becomes the, the second most economical on a life cycle cost basis. And then also metallizing um, now becomes really competitive with, with the other coating systems as well, because metallizing is a, is a zinc, a thermally sprayed zinc coating. 
um, that's going to have similar performance characteristics to galvanizing. And so I think this really drives a point home of, of, of sustainability where you can save a lot of um, money and resources and time and energy over the years. Uh, so in closing, uh, the sustainable development and hot tip galvanizing, uh, social, economic, and environmental factors are all important to future quality of life. Zinc and steel are both naturally occurring, abundantly, infinitely renewable materials. And hot tip galvanizing's maintenance-free longevity provides both environmental and economic benefits by, again, reducing maintenance. You're going to require less energy to maintain the steel over the life. It's going to reduce emissions. And then the big factor that everyone's always concerned about, it's going to lower the cost over time, and it's going to free up capital for new projects. And so in closing, I'll just leave my contact information up here. Um, Dan mentioned the, our association provides technical support to architects and engineers and specifiers. I encourage uh, if you have any further questions, please reach out using this email address and or phone number.